If you will, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the states of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, if you haven't already done so, would you please silence your cell phones? We have a roll call for attendance, please. Atkins? Here. Powell? Here. Johnson? Jones? Here. Long? Here. Hartman? Here. Okay. First order on the agenda is approval of minutes for February 6th, 2023. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I have a motion that we approve the minutes. We have a second. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Jones, second by Mr. Howe. We have a roll call for a vote. Atkins? Yes. Howe? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. <clears throat> Motion approved. Next item is December 5th minutes for 2022 as corrected. We have a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I second that. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Jones and a second by Mr. Adkins. We have a roll call, please. Adkins? Yes. Al? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? 
and it was present at this meeting. He'll vote on it. Probably abstain. Abstain. Okay. In this situation, I will vote to approve the minutes, giving us a majority. Next item on the agenda, September 12th, approval of minutes as corrected. I'll make the motion we approve it. We have a second. A second. Motion by Mr. Long. And second by Mrs. Jones. We have a roll call, please. Atkins. Vote abstain. I was not at this meeting. Al. Yes. Jones. Yes. Long. Yes. Hartley. Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Next item on the agenda is findings of the facts approval. Okay, 10 BCA B 22 Dixon. We have a motion to approve these findings of fact. I've approved the motion. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion by Mr. Long, second by Mrs. Jones. Roll call, please. Atkins? Yes. Powell? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Motion approved. Next item is approval of findings of fact for docket 11 BCA. B-22, AM12, LLC. We have a motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Jones. We have a second by Mr. Howe. Have a roll call, please. Atkins? Yes. Cow? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Motion approved. Begin our time of public hearings. We have no old business petitions. We do have a new business. We have three new business petitions. And during these hearings, these are open to the public. The petitioner will be asked to come to the podium and speak in favor of their petition and present evidence to the board. And then there will be a time for any opposition to also present their evidence and speak to the board. And then there could be a follow up rebuttal by the petitioner. In these meetings and during these hearings, the petitioners and opposition are to address the board from the podium or not to argue with each other out in the audience. Everything is to be addressed to the board. Conduct is to be orderly and courteous. So we'll begin. Uh, docket 01 SP 23 Jennifer Webb, 116 West Indiana Avenue, Upland, requesting a special exception to allow a yoga and massage therapy studio in a residential free zone district. Okay, you tell us why you want this petition and why you want this special exception. 
Yes, and thank you for having me today. I would like um, to ask for a special exception because I uh, I have been a massage therapist for 22 years. It has been my um, interest to serve the community with natural therapies. Um, so I, along with the massage therapy, I teach yoga classes. I make a product line called Genuine Creations, which is herbal and aromatherapy balms and baths. And uh, all of these things work together to help people holistically uh, to heal naturally. Um, as is in the case of myself, I have a lot of allergies. So natural remedies seem to help me um, and my family. Okay. I've been a yoga teacher since 2016. Um, I did want to say that when I began this business um, as an LLC back in August, August 27, 2013, um, it was something that uh, meant a lot to me because. Uh, it was going to make the world a little bit more peaceful for my daughters to grow up in. And um, with that being said, I would just like to um, add that like each year my, my um, business grew at approximately 30% each year with this, you know, incur good encouragement and advice. Um, but it also grew on um, word of mouth. I didn't advertise. I, I was new to the area, and at first I would travel to people's homes and businesses to give massages. Um, and for my uh, safety, accountability, and all of that, I needed to know I was going to go in the person's house that I at least knew the person who was referring me to. Um, that makes sense. And then from there, the word just traveled and spread. And then uh, as of 20, 21, I had over 400 clients um, in my space that um, I was seeing. And that didn't count the yoga um, students that were coming to classes. So the, um, the business, it, 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 it was really successful. Like 2020 was obviously a hard year for me because it's taking like um, eight, eight weeks off, I think, or 11 weeks off, whatever we was mandatory. Um, but the following year was my best year in sales. We do yoga. I um, was able to purchase a um, Boho Wishes trailer is what we called it. But it was with my PPP loan money to, in addition, like grow the business in different ways because my, um, you know, my hands got fur or my wrists. <laughs> got sprained or something. This was going to be something that was going to help supplement my income um, for my for my daughters for my niece. So, purchase them is that. We, um, I did the upland farmers market for I think six years. It was like 2000. 2016, remember 16 up to COVID, and um, tried to grow that every year as well. And now uh, someone else has that, and they're doing a great job with it also. But it was just kind of like my give back to the community um, way for like thank you for supporting us and me and my small business. Now, one of the reasons that I really wanted to ask for this special exception is. Um, because so I did practice out of my home uh, earlier, earlier in my oh my goodness, in my career, and I was informed that it was zoned so I could do that legally. Um, that wasn't the case, and so I really want to do things the right way now, rather than just assume that it's fine for me to practice out of my home and see yoga clients and, and sell my products. I wanted to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to do things that are the right way for 
how this should have been done. Okay. Um, are you aware that R3 retail sales are not allowed? We cannot grant a special exception for that. We can grant a special exception for you to do massage therapy and yoga classes, but we cannot grant a special exception for retail sales. Was that explained to you? I was under the impression that as long as it went under the um, guidelines of health and fitness, that retail sales would be allowed, but I'm not. So. And you're not getting into the NICS, but I believe you the health and fitness retails and sales are allowed. And then the protein shakes and all that. Retail stores. store, it's not that zone. Yes, I believe it was. I believe I sent you an email on that earlier. Same. Yeah. Or in the pre prior time that we were going to hear this. Yeah, and I, I answered back that it was it was under you had asked me how we were putting it through. And I, I answered back that we were putting it through. Fitness and exercise center and club. Yeah, I understood fitness, exercise, and center, but the question was retail sales. So that it, it would be like Planet Fitness. It'd be like any any of these the YMCA, any of these clubs. We did exceptions for beauty shops. We. That criteria that would kind of be underneath that same. Well, this, like, I mean, this this would just be like any other work workout center. So anytime fitness, YMCA, any any of those locations that are allowed to sell their protein drinks and everything else. Retail sales is already. I don't think it's an issue. I'm secure. I want to have. Less. It's, it seems to be okay. It's the retail part of this that's not been um, addressed yet. So, do you have a retail plus resale license? Do you have a license for retail selling? Yes, I do. And I have insurance to um, make the products and, uh, and do taxes on that yes. uh, retail. I have a couple. Are you done it? Are you doing yeah, I, you know, it's still, uh, it's still, it's still a question. Yeah. As to, will there become, will there be people coming here just for retail sales? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. retail sales is definitely not in that zone. It's very residential. All right. And I came back with just. Requesting a special exception to allow yoga and massage therapy. I thought that part had been dropped. Well, I said this, this would be like any other fitness in the health club. So, you know, there's shakes and protein bars and everything else. Those are, those are allowed in R3. Thank you. Go ahead. I don't have shakes or protein bars to sell, but what I have told before is, look, you know, raw local honey. Uh, I want. I would like to sell some nutritional supplements through Nature Sunshine or Mafia Ayurveda. But those are, you know, something I can also refer my clients to. I don't have to sell them to make a profit on them, even though I'm a wholesaler with them. Um, the way that it's worked before is when people would come in for the services, that's when they would um, usually, you know, browse and buy. It was by appointment only. So then it, it's not, you know, and I think that would be nice being as a part of the home. So that way it's not always open, you know, you know I know when someone's coming for their appointment. You have a sign advertising that. Those products at uh, your 
Well, outside up front, I do have the sign that says January creation and that that's my product line. It's also my LLC name. And it says honey for sale also up front. And I have a couple of questions. Are you licensed uh, as an assistant? Yes, I am. And the second question is Are you sole owner of that property? Yeah. No. no, there was an issue when we saw earlier that you had, and have you got that taken care of? I, the house is in my temporary possession. I have um, not got my things, my foot. All of my equipment back to do my my career. Um, that's being handled by our attorneys. I can't say for sure when. I'm being, but you're right, though. That's why I'm asking for a special exception. And I, I think that the best thing to do is until you do come up with the final decision of who who's the property owner, whether it's you or whatever, uh, then we uh, table this until we can make sure we've got everything corrected because we don't want to be dragged into something that we're not part of. And that's not part of what we do, you know, as far as that. So when the property is clear that your name or whatever name it is, then mm -hmm. that'll be fine. But right now you're asking us to make a judgment on for you to do what you want to do with it as a business. And then that property is really what we do is determine who the property owner is so we can make go forward with it. I do have a um, special special exception um, or like court provisional order from Judge Todd, you know, because um, he gave me a provisional order, but not a specific order to say that, that property belongs to you. It has has it been determined? And you know, I am okay. one of the property owners. But okay. Okay. And so once I think once you get that settled, then we can move forward and. What we need to do as far as the property is concerned, okay. because this would be uh, really uh, giving you more or less uh, side, uh, putting us on your side, and we don't know the other side. Of it. So it's best that we not get in the middle of this. So uh, if you like it, we'd like to take one until you can uh, have it down or you know, get your business straight you know, on that part, have it get it straightened down. And then once you come back, it'll, it'll be totally an issue that won't even be addressed because it's taken care of. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Next hearing will be Jackson Wright, 520 Laura Lane, Swedeser, requesting a variance to allow an accessory building to be eight feet, Mr. Chairman, from the north property line. Are, are you going to take a vote? No one made the motion, so we're not going to take the vote. We can just go on its table. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm here um, for my um, husband. It's um, our house, but he's working tonight, so okay. I'm here for him. Um, we have gotten a shed put on our property um, a few months back. Um, we had the property zoned and everything, and um, from what we understand, it's too close to the house, so we need to get it moved over, um, and it goes over the property line. Um, so we, um, I know our neighbor, has she, she brought a letter down to sign off the one that it's closest to with the property line um that they didn't have an issue with that help with the shed being moved over and um that's basically it we're too close to the house but the property line is um there's not enough room yes um so close did you get that left She came over last night and she dropped it off. We came the month before, um, but I guess our name got taken off the list or something, and she had showed up for the 
hearing that day. So she said she would drop out the letter. She did. Oh, she did. I thought we made copies. Okay. One of the things we were hearing now. Uh, on on this one, you're you're close. Okay. Yeah. I that's yeah. Uh, they they had had bought a uh, large yard barn to put in the yard uh, where they have it setting. We could actually, I could actually give them a minor variance for where the setting is within 10%. The, the problem that we run into, if you look into the pictures, Indiana code, if that structure is within five foot of the home, then it has to, has to have a firewall to protect it from the house. Uh, so that gets into the double wall drywall and a lot of stuff for the yard barn. So what they're asking is to move it over another two feet to get it five foot from the house so that they don't have to do the firewall. So it would be it would actually be eight foot from the property line instead of the required thirteen. Except in that case, how can we have Yeah, we've got uh, a letter from the neighbors. Is there anybody against uh, moving the prop, move the barn over? Or is there any left? We, we haven't got any opposition to it. It's it, if if you look at the pictures, it's not impeding on any other. It almost looks like there ought to be an easement or a right of way right there on the other side of it. So it's it's not on any other structure uh, that's close to it. Is the house on the other side of the pine trees during that picture? The adjoining house. Is the pine yes. tree? That's our neighbors. So that's those are our pine trees. Oh no, that is actually because that's their shed, and then those are the trees to their house. Oh, we're going to go this way with it, right? Yeah, now. just a yeah. bit over. And I believe what what originally happened was there were hopes. To put a, a boutique yes. uh, in, into the yard barn and but now I have a I bought I have a store now. Yeah. So they come and talk to us. Uh, they got with the state, got with the Crandalls. Yep. Uh, and it's become almost impossible to to get it done without paying about three times what the yard barn is worth. So now they have a storefront in Gas yeah, City and this is mm -hmm. going to be used for storage. Yeah. They just need to ship. Okay, does the board have any questions for the petitioner? You said that this is going to be for storage. That it is going to be storage okay. now. Could be a little storage. <laughs> Originally, it was, I was hoping to have my uh, boutique out of there, but we ended up um, getting a business in gas and so we may not turn out that way. Are there any other questions? Okay, is there anyone in opposition to this petition? Hearing none, or would you like to discuss this petition? It's open for discussion among the board. The public hearing is at this point closed. She does have the extension to move the bar to be to be eight foot instead of thirteen. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Jones to approve the variance to A to B. Do we have a second? <clears throat> I can second that. Okay. A motion by Mrs. Jones. Second by Mr. Adkins. Can we have a little call, please? Adkins? Yes. How? Yes. Jones? Yeah. Long? Yes. Motion approved. You have your variance. Next docket. 02 SP 23 Town of Fairmount, 214 West Washington Street, Fairmount, requesting a special exception to allow a digital sign in a general business zone district. 
Good evening, Council. How are you? My name is Steve Hedrick. I'm the Fairmount Town Council Board President. I come to you this evening requesting a special exception for a new digital LED sign. The reason that we are requesting this special exception is approximately one year ago, our local newspaper decided to close down due to the economy and due to COVID and the lack of advertising. So it put a hindrance on our residents of knowing what was going on in town. We were receiving on an average about between six and eight phone calls a day at our clerk's office with people inquiring, how are we supposed to receive information if there's no local newspaper anymore? As we all know, the Crompton Tribune's advertisement rates are a little bit higher and their circulation has went a little bit lower. And that's all due to the online spectrum. So we sat down, we put our heads together and we came up to a, uh, pardon the term for lack of a better term, a resolution. How are we going to resolve this for our citizens? As you see before you, you'll have a colorized picture of a digital LED sign. <laughs> The digital sign is approximately seven and a half feet tall by six feet wide. The sign is completely digital. It is all LED. It operates off of a cellular signal that we actually receive a five year service deal with Verizon for inquiring to purchase this. This sign will actually help us keep our residents informed by notifying them of special events going on in town. We can actually put, if we have a boil order, we can actually place that on here, say boil order in effect. Um, we're also looking into a possible of a capability where we can get an add on piece that in the event of our volunteer services have an emergency, you can trigger the word stop to come across the screen and flash where people on both directions heading east and heading west will be able to see the word stop. So they know there's emergency vehicles approaching. That's something that we're looking at. The sign originally appraised out on us almost $40,000. But by the magic of gab and the gift that I have been taught, we were able to get this down at less than $20,000. So we are coming to you guys this evening and requesting this. So by doing such, we are actually wanting to replace an old school fill in the blank sign, as we call it. That's the old school letter sign where you place the letters on there and you explain to people what's going on. One thing that we're looking at about replacing this is in the event of high winds like we've had here recently, those letters magically get blown off and they float into existence and half the time nobody knows what it says. The nice thing with our digital sign is that's guaranteed to work in all severe weathers. They've actually said they've tested them in category four hurricanes and they still work. So we feel that's important. In the event of a severe weather, a tornado watch, a tornado warning, a severe thunderstorm watch and or warning, we can actually program this sign from as far away as 75 miles. So if we want to inform our residents, be aware there's something going on, we can put it on this sign. So those that are traveling east and west can actually see it. As of Friday, I spoke with our local Main Street organization who was actually curious about ordering what we call the brother sign, where they can place it into a local business uptown and whatever we put on this sign will actually reflect on their sign that they're possibly wanting to put uptown. So we'll have the east and west covered as well as the north and south where everyone would know what's going on. So basically as a cure, you no know, part residents. So like I said, we're wanting to replace this sign this sign has been here since 1987, so we feel that it's tough. So what we're wanting to do is install our digital sign here. And two months, we actually have a community day with the children from our high school and our junior high coming into town to help us do some community cleanup, beautification. It's their way of receiving community service hours, which is now a requirement through the State Department of Education and graduate. So usually they come in, they help us paint the curbs, they help our residents clean up some garbage that they may have in there. They also helped last year by washing all of our emergency vehicles, our town vehicles. This year, part of our plan is installing this new sign and having them go around and do some beautiful landscaping around it. Putting some flowers, putting some mulch, make it look a little bit homely. So that is our plan there. So we, like I said, we are requesting a special exception. Um, we have uh, spoke to Mance Electric. 
um, and spoke to them about, you know, possibly installing the electric. They're on board. They're just waiting on the okay from you guys saying that we can go ahead and do this. So at this time, I'll answer any questions or may be in reference to this. Smart to have any questions? Yes, I do. Uh, you said this week, what's how? How bright is that sign for did it, does it affect the traffic? It does not affect the traffic because it'll set back almost 12 feet off of the road. Presently, what will happen is if it will actually it will reflect up to a mile, but there if you go approximately 250 feet in front of the sign, there is actually a building right there that will actually stop that from being seen by oncoming traffic and distracting them. Actually, if you come in from the east and heading west, it will actually be blocked by the fire building, so it will not affect your direction of travel and traveling west as well. It'll still be able to be seen from the road, but two buildings will stop it because it'll basically be sitting in the middle of those two buildings. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, also, with that, uh, it is governed under the digital sign ordinance, and Fairmount did adopt the digital sign ordinance also. So, I mean, they, they will be governed by brightness, all that. Yes, we're doing our due diligence. We knew we adopted the ordinance, but we didn't want to be that municipality that said, well, we adopted it, we'll break the rules. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to do our due diligence and meet with you, you know, and also speaking with Ryan about the situation and letting him know that we do have full intentions on complying with the ordinance that's presented. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Anders. Thank you. Seated. Let's open at this time for discussion among the board. Okay. Hearing none, would someone like to make a motion on this? Oh, wait a second. Sorry. Is there any opposition to this petition? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and would the board members, is there one who would like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the fair amount of application for this time. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Jones. Do we have a second? No second. Second by Mr. Howe. We have a roll call, please. Atkins? Yes. Howe? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Motion passed. Mr. Energy, I do. Thank you for coming in for a special exception. Okay, other business? Kyle, do you have anything for us? No. Ryan, do you have anything? Uh, just the... I, I've got the, the same things for the area-wide ordinance. If you guys are wanting to go over that tonight or late. Okay, well... I have the uh, recommendation from the committee that was working on the rules changes. And so I think that uh, I'm to pass these out to the members as well as staff. And uh, I think that we could work on actually the area wide zoning ordinance and we can review these for a month and come back to the rules of procedure next month and go through that.
as we look at these very wide so ordinance recommendations we'll have to bear in mind that we still have the rules to finalize Where did we leave off on the area wide zoning ordinance last month? Uh, I think. I think we started at the back inadvertently and then went back to the front, didn't we? <clears throat> I know we were struggling with the organization. I have six, eight, four. That was one of them we were looking at. So on, on these, I probably need to see what you have here. Yeah, before, before I before do this. It's best to merge those together. And uh, so I've, I've got, I mean, these are almost, for the ordinance, those are almost proper copies to the state code. Yes, and we didn't make that many changes to the existing rules and procedure. I mean, it seemed like a lot of changes when we went through it, looked at all that was in red, but still, it was probably far less than what was originally looked at. How much time do we have? Looks like we have about 18 minutes. We don't have a lot of time. I think maybe maybe it would be easiest to look at the rules of procedure first. So the small packet that you just were handed. Start on page one there. Let's see if we can get through some of these. Okay, one of the first changes is the use or value of the area adjacent to the property, property included in the variance will not be adversely affected. And that is change, recommended change would be affected in a substantially adverse manner. Now, Substantially is something that the board will have to consider when it's considering what is substantially. Substantially may be different depending on the situation. So that is something that we'll have to define as we're looking at a, at a petition. If someone comes and they have a very expensive large house and it's substantially adverse to that say it was impacted 10 percent on a three hundred thousand dollar house that'd be thirty thousand dollars would that be substantially adverse or would that just be adverse so we'll have to consider that definition when we're dealing with those variances in the future. But that was uh, in state code. We'll change to substantially. So we will follow that. And uh, looking at these, 
do you want to consider every single one and vote on it, or would you prefer to say vote on them by page if you're adopting them? If it's, it's going to be mixed, we should probably look at them one at a time. Then make a, a full comment on it. We might be able to say, like, all in favor say aye for each one, and then we get to the bottom of the page and vote on that page officially on the record. Is that a procedure you're uh, willing to uh, entertain? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, so on that one there, uh, all in favor say aye of the substantially adverse. I'm fine. Post. Check that out. Next, 2113. The need for the variance arises from some condition peculiar to the property involved and does not exist in similar property in the same district. We put down to remove does not exist in similar property in the same district. That is a condition that was dropped. It seems that when you're when you're looking at a variance, so does it really matter if that condition is the same somewhere else in your district? And I think that was why that was dropped from state of code. Okay, on that. Is there any discussion by the board on that? That's down to remove that last <coughs> line of that code there. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Check that one. Then on 2114, small change in the wording here will constitute to usual and unnecessary hardship. It's just to remove the extra words and have it read the strict application of the terms of the ordinance will constitute an unnecessary hardship as applied to the property for which the variance is sought. So just removing a couple words. Are we, on we are on 2113 first page. Okay. Okay. And to remove two and usual. All in favor say aye. Aye. What's that? 2114. Yeah, that slips in there. Okay. If you look there at 2113 and look halfway down that paragraph, you'll see 2114. But it was not, yeah, it's not out there where the other I was looking for it too. Okay. But that word is just redundant. Yeah. 2115 for IC 36749 the board may require the owner of the parcel to make a written commitment concerning the use or development of the parcel that's been removed from state of code. Mm -hmm. So we remove it from our rules. Great. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Check out. Variance of use. The board shall not grant a variance from a use district or classification. That we do not do. So 212 can be removed. We should not grant the variance of use. Any discussion needed on that? Do you want it in there as a reminder? Um, I I think it kind of clouds it. That was what the committee was thinking. And so 
we don't do that. I mean, that that used to be in there more as a what the board could do from right. us specify what the use and what zone it goes in. <coughs> the board does not do that any longer. And so we were thinking best just to take that out and not go down that. Well, what's this variance of use? It just doesn't apply. Is there any more discussion on that? It's a good point. Well, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So on the first page, we were all in agreement. So we need to have a roll call vote to approve the first page changes. Could we have a roll call vote? Atkins? Yes. Powell? Yes. Jones? Yes. Blount? Yes. Approved. Moving on to the second page. Okay, there is classification of use here in red. And we have down as recommended to remove that because that is something that the board does not do. We do not classify uses not listed in table 20. So those, those paragraphs from 214 to 216, we have down to remove. Is there any discussion among the board members? Is that based upon the fact that we don't use them or have not used them in the past? Um, yes, we. it's based on the fact that the board does not have the authority to classify the uses. Okay. The uses are determined by the plan of office based on the uh, zone table. And uh, what is that? The NAI CS that uh, has, has decided <laughs> these uses. So, this, we are not in this business. So, is there any other discussion? Okay. Since that's the only one on this page, can we have a roll call, please? Well, to approve this, or to vote no. I'll have a roll call for that to understand. Do you have a roll call or are you just an eyes for that page? Well, for that section. For this one page, it's the only one on the page we're going to approve each page by a roll call. Okay. All right. Atkins? Yes. Powell? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Okay. That one passed. <laughs> Page three, 2.2 .2, composition. The Grant County Area Board of Zoning Appeals shall consist of seven members who may not hold other elective or point of office in municipal, county, or state governments. The change is to add not. Because we may not hold other elected or appointed offices. Okay, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, then on down to 2213. Two citizen members who may be, may not be members of any plan commission appointed by the Grant County should be council. Substance it says council should be legislative body. Okay, so it's 
pick out council, but in legislative body. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay. On down to three one three. Only one member has been nominated. Election may comprise of a standard vote. However, if more than one individual has been nominated, each member shall choose one candidate by paper ballot. Paper ballots are no longer allowed. So substitute in for paper ballot roll call vote. Any plan commission member receiving a majority of votes shall be elected chairperson. That's that provision. That's the way we've been operating. But that means that correction does need to be in our rules. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um, yeah, can I recommend there, Ed? One thing that, that we do not address in the election of officers is the new electronic policy. I, I have made the suggestion to add in that section there. Uh, members may be present or participate through their electronic communications. Yeah. We'll hang on to that. There, the electronic policy may be in here about see, being seen mm -hmm. and heard to vote. It's included. It's about the last thing in there. Yeah. So, all right. Also on that, once the ballots have been tallied, substitute out the word ballots and put in the word votes. Once the votes have been tallied and a new chairperson chosen, the current chairperson will step down. Here for that change. All in favor say aye. Aye, aye. Opposed? Okay, for that page then, four changes that we made there. We have a roll call for that vote. Atkins? Yes. Powell? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Okay. Okay. Nothing on page four. Moving on to page five. <clears throat> All petitions not initiated by the board shall require application with the board of zoning appeal staff. Filing deadline shall be generally 14 days. Should this be two or three weeks? Rules it was 14 days. Now, staff recommended a three week in the schedule at the end of the year. Which are business days or calendar days? Right. Okay, so 14 days would be calendar days unless it's otherwise specified. Question is, we had a schedule that we looked at and voted on last December for this year, with the deadline being three weeks. So, do we want to make that 21 days? 21 days. Mm -hmm. You're feeling you need the three weeks, is that correct? That was. <laughs> More when there was a difference in dates because there was like a holiday or something on a Monday. And it throws it off. The schedule we passed had everyone for three weeks. And if you're going to get things out and make sure people have time to submit at least 10 days before. You need three weeks, I would think. 
I think that's why we passed. Yeah, emergency of the mail. I mean, we've had we've had times where the mail that showed up after. Or not got it at all. Yeah. 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 Okay. Point taken. Um, okay. Discussion amongst the board. Three weeks. Two weeks. I would say twenty-one days. Twenty-one days. Three weeks. Twenty-one days. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Uh, that's the only change on that page. Would you give us a roll call, please, for people from Atkins? Yes. How? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Okay, we will stop there. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. I have a second. Second. Motion by Ms. Bradkin, second by Ms. Mrs. Jones. Roll call, please. And we will dispense with that. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.